Hey everyone, today is the day to do the switch over and take all the GPUs from here and throw them into here. So first off, let me get everything shut off so I don't have to speak loud in here. Get these rigs off of this table so we can use this table for setup and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got all eight of my Vegas pulled out and ready to go in. But before we put it in there, we really should start this up with nothing in it. Just make sure everything works fine. And we get it showing up in HiveOS first before we populate it. So all I have is a keyboard and a seven inch monitor plugged into the HDMI in the back. So let's give it some power. There we go. Full ramp up. Okay, the fans are down to idle now. Oh wait, no, they're going even lower. Okay, apparently all that fan stuff was just itself starting up. You actually have to hit the power button. Now the unit's physically on. Yep, there we go. We can see it's starting up Hive OS. So when you first plug it in, the fans will kick in, the screen will turn on, but the motherboard is actually not on. It's just doing its own little internal self-test through OctoMiner, that special control board that's sitting right here. You actually still need to hit the power button to actually wake up the unit. So we can actually see it's booting up right now. Let's give it a few seconds. There you go. And you can see it's asking for a rig ID. So we need to go over to a computer here, set up a new worker and give it a rig ID. So let's go do that now. There we go. Login okay, happy mining. So let's go back over. Oh, it's happy now. It's ramped up again. And we can see it, it already popped up and populated itself. It gave it a uh, rig number with the rig ID, which we can change here in a second. No card showing up except for the HD Graphics 4000, that's the built-in iGPU for the Celeron CPU. And we can see on OctoMiner, we even get controls for those four front case fans. Gives you true wattage reporting directly from itself. So even if we put AMD Vegas in here, we will get the correct power readings because it's reading it directly from the power supplies gives you your intake your exhaust temperatures for ps for the power supplies and for those environmental sensors that were on the front and back also gives you humidity and current atmospheric pressure your load averages your cpu temperature everything all the information is on here and then some plus you also have an integration up top here for octominer which allows you to LED blink on errors, turn white LED on to find this rig. That's great if you have like five or six or 20 of these in a row. You click this, the white LED on the front of the screen shows up and you can find that random rig and find out what the deal is with it. You have a manual fan speed and then you have an auto fan.
So there's the finished product. Let's close it up, start it up, and get her hashing. Okay, so we've definitely had some success, and we've definitely had some failures. Right now, we got all eight Vega cards showing up, and they are hashing at 415 mega hash. Let's go take a look at them. As you can tell, I am still not done, and I won't be done for a few more days, but I got a lot of stuff here in the cabinet. If I open this on up, there's the Octominer. The fans are running about 60% on the front there, and it's actually not that loud at all. Then right above that, I got my Chia server, which is not powered on right now, because I need to get more power cables. I got my 24 port switch, and then I got three motherboards running straight down here, all powered from a power supply that Rondi gave me, a nice 1500 watt 94 plus platinum power supply. And two of them are running on Pico PSUs, the back one is running off the uh, ZSX board itself. I have a fourth motherboard sitting up here, which is not powered right now. And I got the Mini Doge right now also being powered by Ronnie's 1500 watt PSU. <clears throat> now, if we take a look at the back, isn't that much to see right now, but there's all your power coming right through here. And you can see the back uh, motherboards right there, hashing away. Now, unfortunately, Marvell, the bottom rig, I had to run a Ethernet and power out and leave it on the rack. And I'll show you why. This is the bad part. I was going to work with the second Octo Miner. And we had a shipping problem. Apparently, this whole thing got kicked in a little bit with the motherboard sitting there, literally pushed the whole thing back, split the PCI connector right here, split this wide open. Thankfully, it looks like the pins are okay on the motherboard, but at the same time, if we look at the motherboard, it's got one heck of a warp to it. So... I'm going to have to contact Chili and see how about how we go about replacing the motherboard and the backplane. Because there's no reason to ship the whole thing down. It's just this part that got damaged. I guess in hindsight, it probably would be good to have a small brace from this little bump that normally sticks right out here. Internally, from here to here, to help strengthen up the back. So this type of thing wouldn't happen again. It might be a one-time thing to happen with shipping. I don't know. But just so everyone knows, keep an eye on this. And I will update everyone with the results that I get from Chile. And hopefully we can get this up and running within the next few days. Hopefully. So thanks for watching. I still like the Octominer cases. This is probably just an isolated incident. And I will let you know how the um, resolution comes along with this. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please. Come say hi at the Mining Misfits Discord to myself and everyone else. And I will see you on the continuation of this series.